pinche gringo. What the fuck's going on, guys? Walking around Mexico City here. And you know, I've been, I've been here for like three, four days now. I spent two years in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. And a lot of y'all know me from that. But right now, I just wanted to talk about a few of the major differences that I've noticed with living in Cambodia, in Phnom Penh, and living here in Mexico City for just a few days. And some people have requested that I speak on the differences of the people and some of the similarities of the people. Well, I haven't been here long enough to really get to know Mexican people, but I have been here long enough to get a layout of the land, to kind of get a feel of what it's like to be here in Mexico City. And just real quick before I get into these uh, to these differences, guys, please subscribe to my new channel, El No Joke. All the information will be in the description box in the uh, comment section below. All you gotta do is click the link, subscribe, fucking do it, because I said so. All right, so, number one difference would be the walkability, man. Dude, in Phnom Penh, you'd be lucky to get a fucking sidewalk at all. Now, like this right here, this is this is commonplace. Now, obviously, Mexico City is the biggest fucking city in Latin America. It's an international city. You got people from all over the freaking world here, and it's pretty, pretty, pretty modernized, man. But in Phnom Penh, the only places I can really think of off the top of my head where you can find sidewalks and walkways would be places like Independence Monument area, the Riverside area, and other like like tourist type places. Like that's pretty much it. Other than that, man, you got to be bobbing and weaving to, to not get hit by motos and tuk-tuks and cars. Not, and, and I'm not exaggerating. Like, if you get hit there by a car, it doesn't matter if you're a foreigner or a local. If you get hit there by a car, man, a hit and run, that shit's all right. That's all right. No big deal, man. I actually got run over by a car there. I got out to confront the guy. He put, he, you know, he pointed a fucking gun at my face. The police came and fucking laughed at me. I was so fucking pissed off. Obviously, in the States and here, it probably wouldn't work out like that. But the biggest difference I've noticed so far just walking around is the walkability. It's a very, very nice place to walk around. Every part of the city I've been to has ample room for you to walk around. And it's nice. In Phnom Penh, good fucking luck, man. Watch your back. Be careful. You have to be a defensive pedestrian because, the, I'm telling you, man, the people on motos, the tuk-tuks, the drivers... They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care. Uh, I, I mean, like I'm like like I'm dead serious, man. They don't give a fuck. Number two, biggest difference are the parks. Are the parks? Now, this is just one. This is just one park out of I mean thousands in Mexico City. Just in my neighborhood alone. Just within a not not like a three minute walk. A three minute walk. There's already four big parks. Four big parks with walkways, trees, benches, basketball courts, and they're even well lit at night. I mean, in Phnom Penh, I'm, I'm honestly trying to think of one fucking park. I'm trying to think of one right now. I mean, like, there's some open grass areas near Independence Monument and Vat Batum near, near, like, the riverside, but half the damn time, the security around there don't even want you on the fucking grass. Now, I'm not going to get, get, get into, like, political reasons as to why there's no trees or parks in Phnom Penh. I'm not going to get into that right now. However, that is a major downside to living in Phnom Penh is the lack of nature. That's something that I wanted to do all the time when I lived in Phnom Penh was simply get the fuck out so I could go on a hike. So I could, so I could just smell the trees, man. <laughs> but here, here is no fucking problem. Here is no fucking problem, man. So if you're coming to Mexico City and you guys like to take a stroll in the park, you guys like to go on a hike, man, hey, this is the spot. Because in Phnom Penh, good fucking luck with that, man. You got to get out of the city for that. Number three, the biggest difference by far, I've noticed, by far, the biggest difference between Cambodia and Mexico are the people, the Mexican people. Now, a lot of people, you know, they'll be, you know, like, like you'll hear somebody say, I don't really, I don't really want Mexicans here. I don't really like Mexicans or this and that. And then they'll say, oh, well, you're racist. That's just like saying that if you don't like Muslims or Islam, that you're racist. Well, I have, I have a fucking newsflash for you, asshole. Check this out. Mexicans aren't a fucking race. Muslims aren't a fucking race. 
Mexicans, that's simply all that is, is a nationality. That's all that is. Even in Mexico, there are different subgroups of Mexicans. You have Native Americans, you have different sub subsets of Native Americans, you have different types of uh, um, uh, mestizos, half Native American, half European. You've got guys like me who look European. You've got black Mexicans, you've got Asian Mexicans, you've got everything in between. But Mexicans are very genetically diverse, just like in Brazil, just like in other parts of Latin America, which is pretty cool. You know, so when you walk around Asia, or sorry, Phnom Penh, everybody looks fucking Asian, which is fine. Now, a true Cambodian, like an indigenous Khmer Cambodian, they're typically going to be small in stature. They're going to be very, very, very brown. Very, very uh, brown. Like I said, very, you know, thin, petite, um, you know, but like they're tough, right? Because they're, they're, they're indigenous, man. Like they grew up in the fucking jungle, in the mountains, in the hills. They grew up in the farms. They're tough, strong people, but they're small. They're dark, and it's the same here in Mexico. The indigenous Mexicans, like... You know the, the 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 Aztecs and the Mayans, and there's countless other subgroups. I'm not an expert, but the, typically they're they're, they're going to be small, smaller. They're going to be very dark, and they're usually tough. They're tough as fuck because their ancestors, man, they they came from some of the harshest uh, 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 environments ever. So that's 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 pretty badass, man. So when I walk around Mexico, I see all these different faces and all these different shapes and sizes and colors, but yet they're all Mexican, and it's cool. And something about me in Cambodia is that no matter where I go, or especially uh, uh, around the locals, is that no matter what I do, I'm gonna stick out. Like I'm I'm obviously the Barang, which is like 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 a white foreigner in Cambodia. Here. I'm obviously a gringo, but not as much, because there are Mexicans that look like me. Maybe not quite as handsome, you know, maybe not quite as, uh, you know, they, maybe with the blue eyes and the blonde hair and this, this perfect nose, but, you know, close enough. So I feel like I can blend in a lot more in Mexico than in, than in Cambodia, even though I can't really. I'm still obviously not Mexican, but you guys know what I'm saying, man. So those are just a few key differences that I noticed right off the bat after being here for just a few days. Um, I'm going to do a video soon of some of the similarities, obviously. Obviously of living in Cambodia, living in uh, Mexico City, and everything's going good, guys. I'm going to be getting my hand fixed soon. I've already got the date picked out. I'm going to do my very, very best to actually film some, some of the surgery so you guys can like see the gore and the fucking blood and the, the, the destruction. So anyways, y'all, if you guys want to shoot me an email, you guys have a video request, I don't care what it's about, it could be about sex, drugs, depression, fucking Mexico, Cambodia, I don't care. I like doing videos for y'all, man. Shoot me an email, guys, No joke striking at gmail.com. Bitches. You guys know it. Follow me on Instagram, guys, at Brayton Howard. Like and share my shit on Facebook, guys, please www.facebook.com slash nojoecoward all my social media contact info my email will be in the description box in the comment section below peace